In the serene northern expanses of Russia, nestled within a quaint village, lived a grandmother known affectionately as Svetlana Georgievna. Following the death of her beloved husband seven years prior, and with no children to call her own, Svetlana found solace in the simplicity and tranquility of her surroundings. Her days were filled with the rhythmic patterns of household chores, the warmth of freshly baked pies, and the joy of sharing these with her neighbors. Svetlana's presence wove a thread of friendship and camaraderie throughout the village, making her a cherished figure among its inhabitants. However, the uneventful flow of her life took a dramatic turn on one fateful, sun-drenched day. Compelled by the beauty of the natural world, Svetlana embarked on a leisurely stroll through the verdant fields that cradled her village. It was during this peaceful sojourn that her gaze fell upon a distant haystack, beneath which slumped the figure of a man. The sight of an empty vodka bottle nearby signaled to Svetlana that the stranger was in dire straits. Driven by a sense of urgency and compassion, she approached the unconscious man, noting his pallor and labored breath. Despite her attempts to rouse him, he remained unresponsive, plunging Svetlana into a state of deep concern. Realizing the gravity of the situation, she hastened back to her home to summon medical assistance, providing the dispatchers with precise details of the man's condition and location. Twenty minutes later, the wail of an ambulance pierced the village's tranquility, arriving at Svetlana's doorstep. The medical team, equipped with their life-saving arsenal, hurried to the stranger's side. They administered emergency care with practiced efficiency before carefully transferring him onto a stretcher. Svetlana observed the unfolding scene, a maelstrom of worry and hope swirling within her. Her steadfast resolve to aid this stranger underscored her inherent strength and kindness. As the ambulance disappeared from view, Svetlana's thoughts followed it to the hospital, her heart laden with prayers for the stranger's recovery. She became a fixture at the hospital in the ensuing days, her presence a testament to her unwavering concern for the man whose life hung in the balance. With each visit, she sought updates from the medical staff, her anxiety tempered by an unwavering hope for his recovery. Finally, the moment Svetlana had fervently hoped for arrived. The doctors informed her that the stranger had regained consciousness, a proclamation that filled her with immense relief and joy. Eager to see the fruits of her compassion, she made her way to his ward. The gratitude in the man's eyes as she entered spoke volumes, bridging the gap between them with unspoken words of thanks. Overwhelmed with emotion, he expressed his heartfelt gratitude to Svetlana, acknowledging the pivotal role she played in his survival. His admission of having no recollection of the events leading to his predicament highlighted the serendipity of Svetlana's intervention. In response, Svetlana offered words of encouragement, emphasizing the natural instinct to aid those in need. She wished him well on his journey towards health and happiness, her actions a shining example of selflessness. Their conversation delved into the profound impact of chance encounters, solidifying a bond of friendship between them. Svetlana's life continued as before, her days marked by acts of kindness towards her neighbors and those in need. However, the experience with the stranger left an indelible mark on her soul, reinforcing her belief in the power of goodwill to transform lives. The tale of Svetlana Georgievna and the stranger she saved became the stuff of village lore, inspiring both young and old. Through her actions, Svetlana illustrated the enduring truth that kindness and compassion are universal languages that resonate deeply within the human heart, echoing across the community and beyond. Grandmother Svetlana's legacy has deeply impacted the narrative of the quaint village, serving as a beacon of inspiration for all its inhabitants. Her life story has evolved into an emblematic tale, illustrating how a single act of kindness can transform lives, spreading joy not only among the recipients but also enriching her own life in the process. This narrative is truly remarkable and uplifting. I'm eager to hear your thoughts on Grandmother Svetlana's story. Please, feel free to express your views and engage in the discussion in the comments section below. After watching this story, how do you feel? Then there is an another story about Father Leopoldo. Let's continue. In the quiet, almost forsaken town, the Church of San Mateo stood as a beacon of hope, its old bell tower chiming a somber yet comforting melody that resonated through its ancient walls. Father Leopoldo, the church's guardian and spiritual guide, dedicated his life to the service of his community, offering solace to troubled souls and guiding his flock towards enlightenment. The church was a sanctuary, 
a place where secrets and confessions were safely tucked away within its sacred confines. One fateful evening, as the last of the parishioners trickled out and Father Leopoldo was about to secure the massive wooden doors of the church, an unexpected sound caught his attention, a child's cry. Turning towards the source, he was surprised to find a little girl, no more than eight years old, sitting alone on a pew, her presence an anomaly in the empty church. With a calm demeanor, Father Leopoldo approached her, scanning the vicinity for any sign of an accompanying adult, but they were alone. Upon closer inspection, the girl's dire state became evident. Her clothing was worn and ragged, her hair unkempt, and her overall appearance spoke volumes of neglect and malnourishment. Filled with compassion, Father Leopoldo gently inquired about her well-being. The little girl, barely managing to nod, revealed a face so pale and tired it tugged at the priest's heartstrings. Her eyes, though sad, sparkled with a glimmer of hope upon realizing she wasn't alone. Curious yet cautious, Father Leopoldo sat beside her, attempting to pierce the veil of silence that seemed to envelop them. His questions, however, were met with nothing but the echoing quiet of the church, a silence as profound and mysterious as the darkest abyss. The sight of the child's frail body, her skin almost translucent over protruding bones, brought tears to his eyes. Moved by an overwhelming sense of urgency, he invited her to partake in a modest meal. As the girl ate with a desperation that pained him, Father Leopoldo tried to learn more about her situation. Her response, when it finally came, was a whisper so faint it was almost lost in the vastness of the church. She spoke of her sick mother and her daily prayers for her recovery. Her devotion and the purity of her faith deeply touched Father Leopoldo, prompting him to offer his support and assurance that God was indeed listening to her prayers. He promised to provide not only for her but also for her ailing mother, fostering a bond of trust and affection that would see the girl returning to the church regularly. However, a shadow soon fell over the tranquil parish. A series of mysterious incidents and an unsettling atmosphere replaced the once peaceful aura of the church. Questions arose, whispers of theft and wrongdoing began to circulate, leaving Father Leopoldo in a whirlwind of confusion and concern. Amidst this turmoil, the bond between the priest and the little girl stood as a testament to faith, hope, and the enduring power of compassion, even as they faced the unknown together in the hallowed halls of the Church of San Mateo the mysterious vanishing of the alms had put him on high alert. The once tranquil sanctuary had now morphed into a place shrouded in tension and an ominous aura. A singular, unsettling question lingered on everyone's lips, what could possibly be the cause of these bizarre occurrences afflicting the parish? Oddly enough, no straightforward explanations were forthcoming. As days turned into weeks, the priest's anxiety became palpable, escalating with each unsettling incident. Alarming reports surfaced of someone pilfering the sacred bread and wine, an act so vile it was scarcely believable. The priest's distress intensified upon discovering that not only were small, sacred items like silver crosses and chalices being stolen, but even some of his personal garments had vanished. These were not mere items, they were treasures of spiritual significance, and their loss was deeply troubling. The priest, a figure of steadfast faith and usually unshakable composure, found himself ensnared in a web of despair. A profound sorrow was etched across his face, compelling him to embark on a bold quest for answers. He resolved to interrogate the congregation, determined to uncover the truth lurking within their midst. Brethren, we must address the disheartening incidents that have plagued our parish, he announced, silencing the whispers with a stern look and a clear voice. Despite the stir his revelations caused among the parishioners, the priest pressed on. Initially, it was the disappearance of alms and seemingly inconsequential items, but now, more precious artifacts were missing. This is utterly unacceptable. We cannot stand idly by, he declared, his voice laden with righteous indignation. Who would dare desecrate our sacred space, he whispered in disbelief to a parishioner, his eyes scanning the crowd for any sign of guilt or recognition. The church was now a battleground of suspicions, with accusations flying like arrows in a fierce conflict. No one seemed to possess any leads, or worse, was willing to share them. The priest felt a profound sense of desolation, each new theft adding to his heartache and fury. In a moment of vulnerability, Father Leopoldo almost succumbed to tears, vowing to protect the sanctity of their place of worship. 
Moved by their priest's anguish, the congregation rallied, committing to a united front to unmask the thief. Their determination was palpable as they devised a plan to restore peace and safety to their beloved church. A silent agreement was forged among them to solve this mystery once and for all. On a subsequent Sunday, a glimmer of joy returned to Father Leopoldo's face as he spotted a familiar young friend. Approaching her after the service, he was taken aback by a shocking discovery. The girl was concealing a golden crucifix, its presence inexplicable. Her attempt to hide it and her evident distress raised alarm bells for the priest. As she fled, his heart sank with the heavy suspicion that she might be involved in the thefts. In a desperate bid for clarity, Father Leopoldo and the sexton resolved to install a hidden camera within the church. After painstakingly reviewing the footage without any significant findings, they were eventually confronted with the undeniable truth. The innocent-looking girl was the perpetrator of the thefts. Confronting her the following Sunday, the priest demanded answers. Shaken, the girl revealed her dire circumstances, her mother was gravely ill, and she resorted to stealing to afford the necessary medicine, clothing, and food. Her confession, though heart-wrenching, did not fully assuage the priest's suspicions about her mother's role in these deeds. Determined to uncover the whole truth, he insisted on knowing where they lived, prepared to confront what he feared might be a more sinister reality behind the girl's actions. Are you going to introduce me to your mother? I really need to understand why you're doing this, the person implored, seeking clarity amidst the confusion. The underlying reason, it seemed, lay with the priest, who had dispatched the young girl on a mission that was evidently against her will. His frustration was palpable, unable to mask his irritation. Yet, the girl, with a resolve born of circumstances forced upon her, declared, No, I cannot bring you to meet my mother. She's been terribly ill, and I haven't shared a word of this with her, her voice quivered, betraying her fear as she took a step back, adamant in her refusal to divulge her home address or any further information. In a swift motion driven by a mix of defiance and fear, the girl made her escape from the church, leaving the priest dumbfounded, his words hanging unspoken in the air. Time seemed to stand still, with several Sundays rolling by in silence. All the while, the priest waited, a growing sense of impatience gnawing at him for the girl's return, hoping for a resolution or at least an explanation that never came. I in the midst of a whirlwind of emotions, the priest found himself oscillating between anticipation and unease. His restlessness grew when he noticed the absence of the little girl, who had previously caused quite a stir with her actions. Nevertheless, he was convinced that it was only a matter of time before she would return to resume her troubling activities. The day the priest had been anxiously awaiting finally dawned. The little girl made her reappearance, acting as if her previous misdeeds had never occurred. This time, however, the priest opted for a different approach, he refrained from confronting her directly. Instead, he patiently waited until the mass concluded, determined to unravel the enigma that she embodied. With a strategy in mind, he discreetly followed her, careful to remain unnoticed. The pursuit proved to be more challenging than he had anticipated. Good heavens, how far does this child live, he pondered, pausing briefly to regain his breath. The little girl had led him on a long journey, covering several kilometers, with the priest struggling to keep pace. Their destination was a dilapidated house, exuding a sinister vibe that seemed to chill the very air around it. Upon approaching the house, the priest was immediately struck by an overwhelming stench. It was a vile concoction of decay and sewage, assaulting his senses from every direction. The air was thick with the odor, saturating the atmosphere with a sense of foreboding and unspeakable horror. With a mix of caution and trepidation, the priest neared a window, ensuring his presence remained undetected. Clutching the crucifix he brought for protection, he felt a slight tremble in his hands. When he peered inside, the oppressive atmosphere seemed to weigh heavily upon him. Yet, amidst the dim light, his eyes caught sight of various objects that appeared to be stolen. Identifying these items, a surge of realization washed over him. Indignation filled his heart as he pieced together the situation. This woman is a heartless manipulator, exploiting her daughter to commit theft, he thought, anger boiling within him. It was clear that the time had come to confront this malevolent woman, to put an end to her wicked schemes. As he entered the 
House, the little girl's shocked and terrified expression greeted him. Father, what are you doing here? she exclaimed, her wide eyes mirroring her astonishment and fear. Fear not, my child. All shall be well, he whispered soothingly, aiming to calm her nerves. Despite her protests and attempts to bar his way, claiming her mother's delicate health prevented visitors, the priest pressed on, driven by a determination to rescue the girl from her plight. Confronting the woman with righteous fervor, he demanded answers. How could you stoop so low as to send your daughter to steal from the church? And to subject her to living in such squalor, he thundered, his voice shaking with indignation. Upon finding the woman unresponsive, wrapped in a sheet, his frustration mounted. Ripping away the sheet in a swift motion, he braced himself for confrontation. What he discovered, however, was a sight so ghastly that it sent shivers down his spine. The woman's body lay before him, in an advanced state of decomposition, a scene so macabre it seemed plucked from his darkest nightmares. Stunned, the priest found himself caught between revulsion and an urgent need for answers. What tragedy has befallen this woman, he wondered, grappling with the horrifying reality before him. The scene unfolds before my eyes, a reality so stark and unbelievable that it's difficult to comprehend how everything could be happening right in front of me. The ambience of the room is heavy with a sinister darkness, a palpable force that seems to swallow everything in its path, leaving nothing but a void in its wake. In this moment, a father is confronted with a grim truth, a reality so disturbing that it blurs the lines between drama and terror, weaving them into a tapestry of nightmares that wraps around him, urging him to escape the horror that has invaded his home. Yet, mere steps away from what he perceives as salvation, the priest halts. A moment of reflection washes over him as he thinks of the impoverished girl left behind. It is this thought that propels him to make a resolute turn, deciding against all odds to return and offer his assistance. The poor woman must have been devoid of life for several months now, he murmurs under his breath, the weight of this realization slicing through him like a blade, bringing an unspeakable pain that seems to shred his very soul. In an attempt to maintain a semblance of composure for the sake of the little girl, he moves closer to her. In the midst of overwhelming despair and suffering that appears to engulf them, he tries to be a beacon of hope, whispering, we need to leave this place. I will find help for your mother. He wraps his arms around the little girl, intending to lead her away from the darkness that has claimed their home. But Leah, with a resolve born from innocence and love, refuses to budge. No, I can't leave her. My mom will get better, she just needs more time. I've already gotten her medicine, but she won't take it. I even brought her sacred items from the church for protection, but she's turned away from them too. She desires nothing but sleep, refusing even the sustenance of food. Overwhelmed by the depth of her situation, Leah collapses into tears, a poignant moment that underscores the tragic reality of their circumstances. This scene paints a vivid picture of despair, hope, and the indomitable spirit of love that persists even in the face of insurmountable darkness. The soul of the young girl, previously shrouded in mystery and seemingly indecipherable, now unfolds itself before her own eyes. The priest, with tears streaming down his face, now fully grasps the harrowing journey Leah has endured. His newfound understanding of her profound suffering and the challenges Father Leopoldo faced in seeking a resolution for the girl's plight has deeply moved him. After much effort, he persuades her to accompany him. The weight of his concern envelopes him like a shadowy shroud, feeling like an immense burden to carry. As he notices the lingering distress in Leah's gaze, still reeling from the shock of her harrowing experiences, he quickly moves to alert the relevant authorities. Leah, through her tears and broken voice, recounts the nightmarish events she's lived through, her eyes mirroring the sheer terror of her experiences. It's revealed that Leah's mother passed away naturally, leaving the young girl, nearly eight years old, in a state of incomprehension and denial about her mother's death. Driven by a mix of desperation and profound love, Leah resorted to stealing alms and other valuable items, hoping to somehow assist her dearly departed mother. Her actions, fueled by undying love and the pressing need to provide her mother with everything she deserved, were meticulously planned out in the wake of her tragic loss. Over time, Father Leopoldo has emerged as a beacon of emotional support for Lia. Gradually, she has come to feel a sense of safety and protection within the church. Walls, considering it her sanctuary and true home. 
Here, she finds solace, feeling cherished and safeguarded. On a serene morning, a grieving couple approaches the altar, their expressions hollow and their spirits crushed by the recent loss of their daughter. The pain of their loss lingers with an intensity that's palpable. Father Leopoldo, a man of steadfast faith, welcomes them with warmth and an open heart, ready to lend an ear to their sorrowful tale. Despite the grim nature of their story, Father Leopoldo remains optimistic, believing that every hardship conceals a hidden blessing waiting to be unveiled by those who seek it with faith. He sees this moment as a divine sign. Aware that nothing can completely fill the void left by their daughter's absence, he gently introduces an idea that might offer them a semblance of comfort and an opportunity to make a profound difference in a young girl's life. He shares Leah's heart-wrenching story with the couple, suggesting that this little girl could be a godsend meant to soothe their grief and bring joy back into their lives. The couple, deeply touched by Leah's tragic circumstances, leave with heavy hearts but promise through their tears to consider the priest's proposal and to communicate their decision later. This narrative not only highlights the compassion and empathy inherent in human connections but also underlines the potential for new beginnings and hope, even in the midst of overwhelming sorrow. In the days that followed, not much time had elapsed before the devoted couple made their heartfelt intentions known at the local parish, extending their sincerest good wishes. With hearts brimming with affection, they shared their profound connection to the gentle spirit of young Lia, a soul radiating with unadulterated and earnest love. It was this very purity that compelled them to open their arms, offering her the sanctuary and guardianship she deserved. The wife, her eyes glistening with tears, spoke passionately, in our home, Leah will discover a haven of safety, a place where her sorrows will be soothed, and her joys celebrated with fervor. We vow to enfold her in an everlasting embrace of love and respect, her voice laden with emotion. Her husband, equally moved, echoed her sentiment, his voice vibrant with excitement, we are committed to creating a nurturing environment for her, one where genuine happiness flourishes. The priest, unable to conceal his joy and appreciation, was visibly moved by the couple's decision, offering Lia a chance at a new beginning with a family filled with love and hope. I am overwhelmed with gratitude and excitement for their decision, he shared, confident in the bright future that lay ahead for Lia under their care. I believe they will be a beacon of hope, not just for Lia, but for everyone around them. Father Leopoldo remained a steadfast figure in Lia's life and that of her new family, providing solace and encouragement as they navigated through their journey of adjustment. Among the cherished traditions they established was the poignant visits to Leah's mother's grave. These moments served as a sacred time for reflection and homage, allowing Leah to keep her mother's memory alive in her heart. Moreover, Leah adopted the practice of attending Father Leopoldo's Sunday Masses regularly, where she found solace in his inspiring sermons, brimming with hope and guidance. Father Leopoldo's unwavering presence in Leah's life became a source of spiritual enlightenment, teaching her the essence of faith and the significance of living by Christian values. Through his guidance, Leah taught to love without boundaries and to seek a deeper connection with God in every facet of her existence. Despite the heartache of losing her mother, Leah rediscovered joy and contentment, surrounded by the love and understanding of Father Leopoldo and her new family. Each visit to her mother's grave stood as a testament to her growth and resilience, a reminder that though her mother was no longer physically present, her legacy endured in Leah's heart, teaching her to find happiness and love amidst loss. As we conclude today's story, we invite you to share your thoughts on this poignant narrative. What do you believe inspired the couple's decision to adopt Leah? Do you think their choice to bring Leah into their family was a wise one? Leave you comments below.